Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today I am going to be showing you a bit of Planet Side 2, the basic features of the game, some of the stats, all that fun stuff. Um, as you can see here, you can make up to three characters at the start. There are three factions in the game. The Terran Republic, right here. The New Conglomerate, here. And the Vanu Sovereignty, here. There are stories involved with these factions. But to be quite honest, you don't really need to know it. And I'm pretty sure most of the players don't. Because there really is no story to this game. It is purely a multiplayer game. Based upon territory capturing. A quick diverge here. Um, for those who are unaware, Planetside 2 is a... It's a game developed by Sony Online Entertainment. And... Now, you know, some of you might... Might hesitate at that, since... Considering everything that they did to Star Wars Galaxies. But in my personal opinion, Planet Side 2 is a very entertaining game. Um... If you truly wish to know the, uh, the, the story behind these factions, um, you can find out on the website. Uh, I'm not going to bore anyone with it, simply because that's not the main purpose of this game, and it, it doesn't, it's not really significant in any way. Um, but, essentially, um, what you need to know is that each faction has their own types of weapons, their own special vehicles and they each have like a little gimmick for, like, for example the Terran Republic's weapons have the fastest rate of fire but their weapons do less damage per hit um, the new conglomerate's weapons I believe have the most damage per hit on their weapons I could be wrong. And of course, the Vanu Sovereignty have no weapon drop off on their weapons. Um, their, their weapon damage is also higher than the Terran Republic's, but I don't know if it's higher than the new conglomerates or not. I apologize for not knowing that. Um, but either way, they all have their own little gimmicks. Um, I will now log in and I will show you some of the basic features of the game. Okay, this here is the is the is the overview map of the continent of Amorish. There are three continents in the game. There's Amorish, there's Esamir, and there's Indar. Uh, the flashing light all around Indar indicates that there is an alert happening right now. Um, what this alert means is 
that there is a, essentially an event happening on this continent here and whichever faction is able to reach the objectives of the alert they are rewarded with bonus points and so forth now as you can see here there's an intricate chain for your faction supplies they all start at your warp gate these darkened out territories indicate territories that are separated from the ch chain of supplies which means you will not receive the resource bonuses that these territories generate until you successfully reconnect them with your supply lines if you zoom in you can see these little symbols in each territory these symbols represent which resource and how much of it the territory generates and as you can see here these these said symbols are represented over here this is your indi this is your personal individual resource counters aerospace is for purchasing vehicles or I'm sorry rather airplanes you know fighters and so forth mechanized is for vehicles tanks jeeps ATVs and, and etc infantry is for your basic you know uh, ground needs such as grenades uh, first aid injectors purchasing um, the ability to pilot a max suit all those sorts of things um, I can switch over to my character's profile here this shows my battle rank over here you have title that you can select from long list of titles they don't really mean anything but you can if you wish um, this is the boost that you can either have a resource boosts or XP boosts that you purchase from their store um, but don't worry this game is free to play at its core you don't need to ever spend a dime on the game um, of course these are your leaderboards here I don't really use them myself because I don't really particularly care about that kind of thing um, these are your personal stats your kills you know, how many facilities you've defended your medals your total score your the facilities you've helped capture uh, your certifications oh, you know, your your deaths <laughs> okay your kill death ratio uh, your accuracy which since I haven't played today I'm guessing that's why that's at zero um, assists and then of course these are your your trends and you can you know go through that on your graph there and then of course you have the stats you know which empire which faction you have killed the most of the revenge all that stuff you know. which faction has killed you the most as you can see I've been killed 46 times by friendly fire uh, that is literally impossible to avoid in this game both for you and for others it is quite irritating and in my personal opinion I think in a game like this friendly fire was a huge mistake um, in any event, you know, there are individual weapon stats, you know, there's there's vehicle stats, and then there's the miscellaneous stats for your gadgets and so forth. Um, these are the boosts that you can purchase for station cash. Again, these are entirely optional. They each have different durations, you know, one hour, one day, three days, seven days, three months, six months. Here we have the weapons uh, loadouts and class selection. This class here that I have, that you have been seeing, is the heavy assault class. This is essentially the heavily armored 
you know, this this is the class that, that takes a beating, that is at the front line always. You know, they are like the go-to soldier. They, they, they just throw themselves at the enemy, and they try to punch a hole. Um, as you can see, you have a primary and secondary, and you have a tool. Now, for the heavy assault, your tool is a rocket launcher. There are many different kinds of rocket launchers. This is the standard rocket launcher that you come with, right here. Um, unfortunately, most of the faction-related weapons pretty much look identical in this game. See, like, for example, right there, pretty much an identical gun. Um, that one is different, but... Again, it, it, some guns are, are better looking than others, but um, this is the, uh, let's see, it's another gun that looks essentially the same. It's very disappointing, really. All that's different is the stats, for the most part, unless you buy NS guns. NS guns can be used by any faction, um, and they do have a unique appearance, as you can see, compared to the faction locked guns. This is the gun, this is the rocket launcher I currently use because it has a lock-on feature for both tanks and aircraft. Um, obviously its only downside is the fact that you cannot shoot this gun unless it is locked on. Whereas opposed to this here, which also locks on but it's a vehicle only lock-on. And as a result you can also fire it freely using its crosshairs. You know, it's for the sake of balance. And of course, you know, your primary weapons, there are several to choose from. You have a ton of shotguns. You have a large amount of SMGs. You have uh, battle rifles. Large machine guns. and so forth. Uh, secondary weapons, you know, pretty much your standard pistols. There are a lot of them. To, well, not a whole lot, but quite a few to choose from. They all, again, weapon appearances aren't really all that unique. Um, melee, every class has a melee. It is always a knife. You can't really change this. It's always just the generic knife. Um, these are your utilities. I have a medical kit equipped. This is a self-healing device. You eject with yourself. Now, as you can see, the Heavy Assault has C4 and a Restoration Kit as well. This is a health over... This is a heal over time, whereas this is just a straight heal. And, of course, I have grenades available as well. These are the frag grenades. You can also have concussion grenades and anti-vehicle grenades. Then, of course, you have the abilities. The Heavy Assault has a unique ability called the Nanite Mesh Generator. This essentially creates a shield around your character that will absorb a predetermined, uh, a certain percentage of damage, which every shot takes away energy from its power supply. After this is, after this is done, the shield must recharge before you can use it again. It also has a resist shield. And of course, adrenaline shield. And of course, you have a, a separate suit ability. I have nano weave armor equipped. Which, as you can see, adds resistance to small arms projectiles. You also have munitions pouches, increasing at your carrying capacity for rockets. There's also an advanced shield capacitor, which reduces the delay recharge of your basic shield. Because every class has a basic shield. 
um, you know, ammunition belts, extra magazines, flak armor, this helps you resist explosions and so forth. And of course, grenade bandolier, extra grenades that you can carry. Um, each class has its purpose and use in, on the battlefield. Such as the infiltrator, which, which obviously, you can, as you could tell by the name, should be pretty obvious. Um, they're essentially, um, inf obviously, infiltrators, but they are, are also good for assassinations, as they have a cloaking device. They also have a tool, the recon detection device, which, when fired, will help you see other cloaked enemies in the vicinity in which its projectile is fired in. So it's harder for people to sneak up on you. Now for the infiltrator, there are plenty of types of, of guns, many different sniper rifles. They can also use SMGs if they wish. This is the scout rifle. And that's a, another scout rifle. I don't particularly use this class much because I'm not very... You know, it doesn't really fit my playstyle. Um, there's the hunter cloak, which is the basic cloak that comes with the class. Um, essentially it turns you invisible for a limited period of time. Um, until it eventually drains your battery and then it will disable. Um, the Stalker Cloak is a relatively new feature. Um, the cloak will remain active indefinitely as long as you remain stationary. And then of course you have Nano Armor Cloaking. But either way, as you can tell, you know, they're basically cloaking. And then of course for suit equipment you have the adrenaline pump the advanced shield capacitor ammunition belt flak armor nano weave armor and again the grenade bandolier a lot of classes share abilities you know for the sake of convenience of course infiltrators have claymore mines instead of c4 but their other two devices are exactly the same Of course, they also have a motion spotter device that you can use instead of the recon detection device, if you choose. Now you have the light assault. The light assault trooper is a trooper that comes. It is the only class that has a jetpack, and essentially, what they do is they sacrifice armor for maneuverability this allow this jetpack allows these troops to say like when you're attacking a base you can jetpack up onto the roof of an enemy structure go in through the back door and burn down enemies from behind while they, while they are distracted by your comrades at the, in the front of the building just as a very brief example of something the light assault trooper is capable of. Um, again, they their generic weapon is a carbine rifle. Um, there are many, again, many different guns you can have. Uh, this is a shotgun that I seem to have. I don't recall having that, but either way, um, you know, again, SMGs, shotguns, and carbines. Up to personal preference, what kind of, what type of gun you would prefer. And of course, again, relatively same selection of pistols. Pistols don't really change much. Um, of course, then you have the uh, jump jets ability here. Then you have drifter jump jets, which means you cannot thrust upwards anymore with these jets. But you know you have a more controlled burn, which allows you to glide at much longer distances at increased speeds. So it's up to you to decide what you know if the trade-off is worth it for that particular thing. 
And then of course, again, suit abilities. These are pretty much universal for most classes. Then of course we come to the combat medics. Now combat medics obviously, as the, as the name implies, are medics. They are responsible for healing allied players, primarily. Um, they cannot really take much damage, so it is mainly a support role. And again, as you can see, standard SMGs, shotguns, and assault rifle is their weapons of choice. Um, they have the same utilities as the heavy assault, as you can see here. They only have the one device, the nano regen device, which is essentially an AoE heal. And of course, suit abilities. Again, same basic abilities. And of course, they then they have the medical applicator here. This is the tool that you use to heal forces with. Um, medic combat medics are also the only class that can revive maxes. They cannot heal maxes, but they can. Re they must revive the maxes. The engineering class is the class that heals maxes in combat. But a combat medic is required if a max goes down in order to revive it. Uh, but since we're on the engineer, we will now move on to this. Um, they start off again with a carbine rifle. Uh, then of course you have the battle rifle, the SMG, carbine, and shotguns. Now the engineer is arguably probably the most important class on the field. They have many responsibilities that that they need to do. Um, in base defense, they are responsible for maintaining um, the fixed gun positions by repairing them. They are responsible for repairing the you know, the shield generators should they be destroyed or damaged. Um, repairing friendly vehicles. Again, as I said before, repairing the max units. Um, they are also responsible for placing turrets. They they can they can place turrets on the battlefield that others can use, and the engineer can in turn repair these should they take damage. There is the anti infantry turret and the anti vehicle turret. Um, their utilities are a bit more extensive. They come with claymores, ammunition packages, and tank mines, in addition to the medical restoration and C4. Um, ammunition packages are very important. This is the primary way. This is a very easy way for other teammates to restock their ammunition. So essentially an engineer will drop the ammo pack on the ground and all an ally has to do is walk up to the pack and their ammo will begin to replenish. As I said, the engineer is extremely important on the battlefield. They have many responsibilities, all of which are important. Um, again, the only real difference here is the utility pouch for the suit equipment. It allows you to carry and place more deployables, which is obviously very important for an engineer, as I explained. And as you can obviously see, they only have the nano armor kit, which is their repair tool. You can upgrade these, obviously by clicking upgrade. These are the amount of certification points that you need to, uh, for for that for my next level of upgrade. These are your cert points here. So it would cost almost half of my points to upgrade next, but I don't need that right now. And then of course.
course, at, as, at the bottom here, as you can see, there are... You can click on these. This is for each faction. They each have their own... This is where main a lot of the... Um, this is basically a more... Um, sprawled out list of the abilities that I just showed you. It's just all in one convenient menu. And then of course, we've already gone over the Heavy Assault. And last but not least, we get to the Max Unit. Now the Maxes are beasts. As you can tell by their appearance. Max units are one of the most valuable assets on the battlefield, bar none. Typically used either for an offensive rush or for a desperate last stand defense or to hold a choke point to block an enemy advance. Maxes can be extremely well utilized. They are an extremely valuable asset on the field. And arguably it should be an engineer's primary job, really, to make sure Maxes stay alive and make sure everyone has ammo. And of course, as I said before, to make sure everything is repaired. This is what makes the engineer so important. Now Maxes, as you can see, have two guns, one on each arm. My Max currently is equipped with dual miniguns. I also have um, a different loadout for anti-air defense, for anti-aircraft duty. These are two flat guns that are strapped to my Max that will deal with all enemy aircrafts. Um, it is basically the exact same thing as a base's anti-aircraft turret, except these guns can't be destroyed until the max is killed, or you run out of ammo. This is also a grenade launcher here. There are several different types of, of weapons available. Um, for example, right here, this is a, a rotary cannon that fires uh, rockets. This is essentially the anti-vehicle weapon for the Maxis. There is one for each arm. Just like my anti-aircraft weapons here, there's the anti-vehicle weapons, and that's what those were. I do not have those at the moment. Now, Maxis have separate abilities. They have the lockdown mode, which essentially anchors themselves to the ground. They won't be able to move, but they have increased fire, a rate of fire, reload speed, and projectile speed. Um, then they have the basic charge ability. This is what all maxes come with standard. Um, it's a temporary burst of speed that allows you to sprint for a very small period of time to either charge into a battle or to retreat from a battle if the situation is too hot. Um, and then of course then you have the ammo storage canister, pretty self-explanatory, you get extra ammo, which can be very useful if you're holding down a choke point, but then again, so can lockdown. Again, every ability has their place on the battlefield. None of them are, none of them are pointless. And then of course the suit abilities. This is the Nanite Auto Repair System. Now this, in my opinion, is extremely useful for a max. Especially since there are not always an engineer available. Essentially what this obviously does is it self-repairs the max out of combat. Um, in combat it will not do anything. So as long as you are in combat, you're, you're out of luck. Then you better hope for an engineer. But um, overall the self-repair is very slow, as, so it's not to be overpowered. Um, but you can fully heal to full full strength again if you're able to get to that point. And again, you have the kinetic armor here. <coughs> Anti-infantry weapon damage resistance, including vehicle-mounted light machine guns. And then, of course, the max flak armor, 
reduce damage from explosions. And then of course for each class, you can customize your appearance. You can place decals on your armor. <laughs> Either rank symbols that you unlock by leveling up, or custom decals that you choose. All cosmetic things like this you require station cash. All the armor aesthetics, all the helmets, they all require station cash. But again, these are purely cosmetic items, so I don't have a problem with it. Um, you can also purchase camos. There's an example of a camo there. Now, of course, we get to the, uh, the vehicle tab here. This is the basic Flash ATV. Every class, every, all three factions can access these. Same with the Harasser. It is a small Jeep-like vehicle with, a ma with machine guns on the top. But again, just like your character, you can also customize the guns equipped to all of your vehicles. So for example, you can equip it with a, a Halberd rocket with a Vulcan minigun here. Walker heavy machine gun. Designed for aircraft duties. And then of course each weapon, I'm sorry I didn't go over this with the regular guns, but this applies as well. There are different optics you can equip to every gun. Zoom optics, um, utilities, magazine sizes, reload speeds, and of course, ammo. This applies to your regular guns as well. For example here, I can equip scopes, different barrel types, um, with the rails, different rails. I have a forward grip on mine to reduce horizontal recoil. Um, then of course, different ammo, soft point ammo, high velocity, and of course, camo for your guns. You can do that if you wish. Um, back to the vehicle tab. Again, like I said, gun um, vehicles have their own stats as well that you can upgrade. You can reduce the timer that you need between times that you can purchase the vehicle. Uh, different um, vehicle abilities such as smoke, radar, uh, turbo, fire suppression in the event that it catches on fire. Um, the ATV can cloak, as you can see. Um, Vehicles can also auto repair, composite armor, mine guards, um, vehicle stealth, different chassis for different things. I'm honestly not really sure what chassis do. I don't really take the time to read them. But it's all explained for you in the menu. Uh, this is the Sunderer. This has two guns on it. I don't know if you can see them. The Thunder is essentially um, a support vehicle. It is extremely useful. Arguably one of the most valuable vehicles. Um, it can transform into a mobile spawn point. It can, uh, you can essentially deploy it into a mobile command center of sorts where people can spawn and change their loadouts, rearm, and all that from these Sunderers here. And again, just like every vehicle, you can change which guns you want equipped. You have to uh, unlock these, obviously. Um, the Sunderers have different utilities. Gate shield diffusers. Now, this is extremely useful. This is what most people tend to use. Um, essentially this allows you to bypass anti-vehicle shields located at enemy bases. It should, in case that, in the event that your forces are not able to sneak into their base and disable their generators. Um, then of course there are smoke screens and fire suppressions again. 
important, and of course there are um, defense equipment. This is proximity repair systems. This will essentially repair all nearby vehicles. Um, you have blockade armor, reduces uh, damage from attacks done to the Sunder. Um, this is the uh, vehicle ammo dispenser that should be pretty self-explanatory. It re rearms any nearby vehicle. Um, then of course you have the nanite auto repair system, which of course repairs the Sunderer out of combat. So if it's being attacked, that's not going to do this, obviously. Um, of course vehicle stealth. Um, mine guards, again. Helps protect from mines. And of course, proximity radar. Which can help um, reveal hostile soldiers on the, on the radar. For anyone to see. And then of course you have the lightning tank. This is the standard tank that all factions have. And again, you can change which type of cannon you want on the top. And there are, again, different attachments for each barrel. And again, smoke, fire suppression for the utility. Defense systems, reinforced top armor, reinforced front armor, reinforced side armor. Mine guards, proximity radars, and an auto repair system. Now this is the Prowler. This is a tank unique to the Terran Republic. As you can see, it has two barrels on it to be fired in rapid succession, in addition to a machine gun on top. And again, like everything else, different barrels can be equipped and different attachments attached. Um, Again, anchor. Um, the Prowler can also go into anchored mode, which is similar to the Max mode. It hunkers down. It cannot move, but its reload speed and projectile speed are increased. So it's essentially a siege mode. If you're attacking an enemy base, you can go ahead, drop down into anchored mode, and just you and, and use it to bombard the enemy base with it. Um, keep in mind, this will leave you extremely vulnerable to enemy counterattacks. And of course, different chassis, speed and accelerations, and so forth. All vehicles can also be customized with either camos, decals, ornaments, um, exterior platings. But again, all cosmetic items require station cash, which required being purchased with real money. But again, all cosmetic, purely cosmetic. You can buy weapons for real money, um, as you can see here, with station cash. But you don't have to. You really don't. Um, and of course, this here is this is the Mosquito. This is the unique Terran Republic fighter. I gotta be honest, I don't really like it too much, but that's probably just because I'm terrible at flying these things. Um, and then of course for wing mounts, you can either have the afterburner fuel tanks, then you have different rockets, Hellfire rockets, Hornet missiles, the Tomcat pods, and Coyote missiles. In addition to your regular gun, and again, attachments for each gun. They have different utilities, radar, flares, ejection, fire suppression, and engagement radar. Defense equipment, composite armor, stealth, and auto repair. Dog fighting airframes. Hover stability airframes. And of course, racing, airframe, for speed. And then of course you have the Liberator. This is the standard gun, this is a gunship that you can fly over enemy positions and rain down fire upon them 
like an AC-130. Um, as you can see, it has three guns. Uh, there, multiple, multiple people can get into these and control these different guns. Each gun can, of course, be upgraded to something else. Depending on its gun position and its purposes. And again, different attachments for each gun. They also have flares, ejections, they have afterburners. Uh, you know, precision bomber airframe. High G airframe. And then of course we get to the Galaxy, which is a substantially larger aircraft. It is also a gunship, but it can also be used as a transport. These are, these take a, a lot of punishment. Um, as you can see, there are four guns on this, on this particular ship. And again, each gun can be upgraded to something else. And again, each gun can have attachments. Then you have the social ones, you have your squads. You can join a squad and communicate. Uh, squads have a lot of special abilities, such as the ability to... The squad leader can... Um, Create unique spawn points just for a squad, for his squad mates to spawn at. Um, he could pop a smoke to designate a rallying point for squad mates. Um, squads can then be absorbed into bigger squads to create platoons and so forth. It's all, it's all very organized. Um, outfits again. This is kind of like a um, a clan kind of thing. Um, your friends lists. Your voice and chat, um, notifications, videos, and then of course this is the start menu. This is the basically a very nice, easy menu for everything, all vehicles, all classes. And even the squad leader leadership abilities. Um, this is a very useful skill skills to have. Um, again, here here are the spawn beacons that I was telling you about that squad leaders can use to hot drop into a vicinity. Um, these all have their very special uses. Okay. But overall, this menu is easy to buy the different abilities. It's all just a big all in one menu. Um, and then, of course, this is the, um, the store. We can buy uh, bundles. You know, um, armor bundles. Helmet bundles. You know, um, starter bundles, you know, pro bundles, all this stuff. You know, again, not mandatory. You can get every gun in the game realistically just by playing the game with and buying it with cert points. Um, it is a little pay to winny, admittedly, but it's not as bad as it sounds. It's really not. Uh, there's also a membership that you can subscribe to. Obviously, the membership comes with bonuses. Whether these bonuses are worth it to you is another question. 
um, they're not worth it to me. So I don't bother. They might be to you. That's for you to decide. Um, and again, this is the big uh, you know, all-in-one menu for infantry weapons. Infantry gear, vehicle weapons and gear, boosts, utilities and camos. And then of course you have the premium early access stuff. Um, not really sure how to access this stuff, but it doesn't really seem worth my time. Um, so that is essentially the bare bones basics of Planetside 2. Again, each faction has its own things, but for the most part, the factions are fairly uniform. Um, each faction has its own plane, its own tank. Each are, are better at different things. Um, I hope you found this video informative. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought. If you would like to see some gameplay, let me know. I will record a, a, a session. Um, I suppose that's all I have for the moment. Um, again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, again, just as a reminder, the game is free to play. You can download it right now off Steam and play to your heart's content and never pay a dime. It, this is war on a massive scale. During peak hours, battles can be huge, absolutely enormous. If that is the kind of thing that you want to see, please feel free. Um, thank you for watching. Again, I am the Revengist. I will see you later. Have a fantastic day.